Hello, boys and girls. Uh, today I want to teach a lesson about the cone layout. I want to teach you guys this at the beginning of the school year because a lot of your assignments will involve solving multiple step equations and it's just a very helpful way for you to solve them and it's, it's a way that's easy for me to grade and to see your thoughts and it's a good way for you, if you accidentally make a mistake, it's real easy to see where you made the mistake and then to fix it yourself. So those are kind of the main things I want to cover in the first two days of actual lessons that I want you guys to know how to do this cone layout and I want, to know, I want you to know how to fix mistakes in your equations. So uh, fix mistakes as you solve equations. So the first thing I want to explain is that this cone layout is just a general way to say that as, you, as we solve this equation step by step, it's going to start out really wide like this, but our answer is going to come down to kind of a point it's going to say x equals a number. And this is just generally, sometimes it'll get a little bit bigger before it gets smaller, but we are trying to go from this whole big equation all the way down to just x equals a number. That's why we call it the cone method because it, it really hopefully is in that sort of a shape of like a upside down pyramid. So that's why we call it the cone layout. You can call it the cone format or whatever. Uh, it's just a way to solve equations one step at a time and you see each step. So if I look at this equation, there are two things that I want to do right at the start. I can tell that I want to distribute this into uh, this part, or I will solve, well I will take the square root of 25, and I can do those both at the exact same time. So if I'm going to distribute, I need to multiply the 7 times the x and times the 4 separately, so we will have 7x plus 7 times 4 will be 28 minus the square root of 25 is 5 equals 44. Now we can combine the positive 28 and the minus 5. So if we have 28 minus 5, we will be left with a positive 23. So once again, we will have this 7x plus 23 equals 44. And you know what? I'm actually going to make it a little bit more detailed. Uh, I'm going to show that I have combined these to make that. This just lets us go one step at a time. Now what I'm going to want to do, I want to get this 23 to come over to this side. I'm not allowed to just move numbers, so I have to have a mathematical reason why I'm moving the 23. So what I'm actually going to do, I'm allowed to subtract a certain value from both sides of an equation because if they were equal at the, if they're equal now, then subtracting the same number from both sides, they will still be equal. And it will be very useful to subtract 23 from both sides because it will make this side cancel out and it will make this side become the same amount uh, lower. So both of these are going to be 23 less, essentially. And it, if it's an equation beforehand, it will stay equal after we do this. So we have 7x equals, as you can see, each time I do it, I'm just bringing things down. And I'm rewriting the whole thing. 7x equals 44 minus 23. We can figure that out. We have 20. 1. 7x equals 21. Now I want to get x by itself. That's our goal. I need to get rid of this 7. Right now the 7 is multiplying. So I need to do the opposite. I need to divide by 7. 
So I will show that I'm dividing by 7, and then on this side I will also divide by 7. So 7x divided by 7 is just x. 21 divided by 7 is 3, which means that our x is equal to 3. And when you're done, generally I will want you to put a box around your answer. So as you can see, we kind of have this general upside down pyramid shape, and that is how I will really want a lot of your work to be done. Because if you made a mistake here, let's say, let's say rather than getting 21, if we accidentally made a mistake and you thought that the answer was, um, maybe you thought it was 28. Um, so then you've got this mistake going on here, we do the same thing, divide by 7, you don't know anything is out of order, you say x equals 4. Well, if I'm grading your paper, and I see that you have x equals 4, I'm not just immediately going to mark the whole thing wrong. I'm probably going to go back to see where did you make your mistake. Because if you made your mistake here, well, you got about halfway through correct, and then you made one little error. What I'm actually going to do for this sort of a, a equation, if, you, if I see that you got halfway, I'm going to give you half credit. So if you can do this sort of format, it'll help you, and it'll help me know what's in your mind. It'll help you because you'll still get half points, which will really add up, rather than just getting zeros for any missed, any missed equations. So, uh, let me go through one more example. It'll be a little bit smaller than this, and it'll hopefully give you the idea of what we're going for, what I'm looking for. Worksheet 
that I want you guys to complete. And I want you to complete it on a piece of paper where you can do this format for all of the equations. And it's important that you do this because we are going to use this worksheet for our work on our lesson number three. So, good luck with that. If you have any more questions, you can email me, or when you see me in class this week or next week, you can ask me anything you need to. Uh, thank you, and have a great day.